Hello there, my creative friends. Today, we're checking out one of the best of British pencils. Direct from the sunny shores of the United Kingdom, this pencil is iconic in its stylings and design, at least here in Australia. Quality, craftsmanship and innovation are key claimed cornerstones of this company. I present to you the Derwent Artists Coloured Pencils. Today's pencil of choice is one of the oldest and most well-known pencils among nanas everywhere. I'm obviously joking, but honestly, the amount of people who have told me they were gifted Derwents by an elderly relative is surprisingly high. Even I was gifted a set of these when I was a tiny person by my grandma. Derwents have been here in Australia for a very long time, and in that time, they've developed a reputation of quality and prestige. But are they actually any good? Or is it simply a case of being a pencil that people recognize? Well, let's test them out and find out. First up, let's have a close up look at pencils themselves. What we have here is the Derwent Artist Colored Pencils 24 pack. The first thing I notice is the packaging. It's classic in their signature colors. With the Derwent logo in red, smack bang in the middle and the series Artists directly under that. There's a very small, easy to miss swatch chart at the bottom of the tin and a little British flag in the corner. On the other side is information about the history of the company and the usages of the pencil. Interestingly, Derwent states they are ideal for a wide range of drawing styles from bold landscapes through to more detailed illustrations. Opening it up, the tin is possibly the most well-made and thickest tin I've seen in these reviews. It's solid. And here are the pencils. At first glance, the pencils seem thicker than most I've seen, but they all fit snugly in a plastic insert that keeps them together. And it looks like this insert is deep enough that none of our pencils will escape. Overall, this kit seems of high quality. And with the depth of the holder, I suspect you could store your pencils in this kit. But let's have a look at the pencils themselves. The Derwent website is one of the easiest sites I've seen to get around. There are a lot of products Derwent produces, much of which I'm going to be very interested to try in the future. But when you drill down to the artist pencils, they come individually and in sets of 12, 24, 36 and 72, as well as a 48 pencil wooden box. Derwent has a surprising amount of information on the site, including a very nice color swatch for each kit, product information, and as a lot of pencil brands are doing now, a review section for these pencils. There is minimal information about the core mix, but apparently the fatter size and waxy texture makes these pencils ideal for layering and blending, which is great to hear. The pencils themselves are a classic round barrel pencil. The length of the overall pencil is a lengthy 180 millimeters and the diameter is a generous eight millimeters. This pencil is also a wax based pencil with a robust four millimeter core. First thing you can see in this pencil's design is the rough wood of the barrel tip. It does clean up quickly with a sharpen, but it's quite a surprise when you see it. The design of the pencil is quite classic. The shaft of the pencil is decorated in what I would call British green, with elegant gold printed lettering along it. On one side of the pencil, printed from tip to base, we have the word England, and then the logo of Derwent Artists. Followed down the shaft is the color and item number, followed by a decorative silver ring that circles the whole pencil diagonally before the color color swatch. The Derwents have a rounded end. Initial thoughts with these pencils are a little bit mixed. The colors and style should be elegant and classic. Gold and British green is very royal, but for some reason it just feels a little unfinished. Things like the raw wood tips don't really help in this aspect either. I'm assuming this is so that you get the maximum pencil when you buy them, but it really feels like someone forgot to do their job at the factory. Another strange thing is when you were looking at these pencils, you would think they would be super smooth in your hand, but it's actually not the case. The pencil's paint has this sort of grippy texture on your fingertips, which feels odd. I'm not sold on whether I like this or not. I guess we'll have to see as we go along. Well, that's the physical aspects of our pencil. Let's talk about how we're going to test them today. Because we sadly don't have time to test all the pencils today, we're going to pick four primary colors and a black and white. The colors we're using today are Red, Deep Vermilion 1400, Green, Grass Green 4700, Blue, Spectrum Blue 3200, Yellow, Lemon Cardamom 0200, White, Chinese White 7200, and Black, Ivory Black 6700. The first test we'll start with today is the Saturation and Vibrancy Test. For the saturation and vibrancy test, we're going to be drawing with our pencils at five different weights. 
25 gram, 50 gram, 100 gram, 200 gram and 400 grams, so light to heavy. What we're looking for with this test is of course how saturated and vibrant our pencils are, but also the consistency of that saturation across our weight range. As our pressure increases, so too should the saturation and vibrancy. Each doubling of pressure should give a consistent and noticeable increase in our pigment put down. As per usual, the scales I'm using here are from my kitchen and not a lab, so the numbers might jump around a little. Also, for anyone interested in paper, I'm just using a basic 120 GSM white multimedia paper for these tests. Let's go see what happens. We're getting started on this test today with our 25 gram weight. This isn't a lot of weight, but it really shows us just how light our pencils can get. Here we go with our red, and we can see that it's going down quite lightly, which is exactly what we would expect at this weight. It's actually a bit tricky to see the red and the green at this weight because it is so light. The blue has a bit more saturation and vibrancy at this stage, but not a huge amount. The yellow, in fact, is actually really difficult to see at this weight. The black is probably the most saturated in the 25 gram weight. Let's move into the 50 grams now. We definitely have increased in saturation and vibrancy, but maybe not 100%. The green and blue similarly have increased in vibrancy and saturation, but just a little bit. The yellow is still very hard to see at this 50 gram weight. The black, on the other hand, like the other colors, has increased a little in saturation and vibrancy. Let's have a look at the 100 grams. The red has become a little bit more saturated here. I guess on the building of saturation here, it might have doubled. Likewise too, the green is also a bit brighter here. The blue is quite obviously more saturated and vibrant at this 100 gram weight, but that yellow, while it has increased, still is very hard to see. The black, however, has definitely increased in its saturation and vibrancy. Moving into the 200 gram weight, we are finding that the red has started to finally pump up the brightness. The green too has really jumped in its saturation and vibrancy. The blue has stepped up in saturation here, but the yellow is still disappointing. The black has gone up in saturation and vibrancy, but only a little bit. Last but not least, we have the 400 gram weight. While that red is much more saturated here at the 400 gram mark, it's not as bright as I would like. The green and blue are also much more saturated here. We can finally see our yellow, although I'm tempted to go even heavier with the weight. I just feel like it's not reached its kind of saturation that I would like it to. The black, however, is much more saturated and vibrant. Let's take a look at our Derwent white pencil. It's very light to start at 25 grams, but the intensity is getting a little better at the 50. We have a little bit of an increase in saturation and vibrancy at the 100 grams, but it's definitely coming into its own at the 200 grams. The white in the 400 grams is actually pretty bright and saturated. Well, the results for the Derwents are in, and these pencils aren't bad. Not amazing, but not bad. The consistency between the pressures is okay, and the red, blue, and black had fairly even steps up in saturation, but the green and blue really didn't start increasing much before that 200 gram mark. I did notice that they are not really a super saturated pencil. Each step up in pressure seems much lighter than what I'm used to seeing in this test. Even for wax pencils, which often struggle at the lighter weights, they don't feel like they're overly saturated until they hit the 400 gram mark. Even then, I feel like they're struggling. The red, green, and blue are very similar, but the worst pencil here I'm seeing is the yellow, which is extremely light for its color. For the first time ever, I'd actually say the white does better than the remaining colors. It's impressive in its vibrancy and step ups. One major issue I've also noticed is that these pencils are quite scratchy. It's really strange because wax-based pencils are usually soft and saturated. You would think that the Derwents would be softer, but as I draw, it feels like they're constantly grabbing the paper. I'm also finding these pencils are not overly comfortable to draw with. While it's only slightly thicker, the diameter of the pencil is a bit big for my hand to fit comfortably around. The strange grippiness that the pencils have on their barrel also means it's been catching in my hand. Okay, let's do some grading. On our scale of A to S, with S being superb, let's see how these six colors performed. For our saturation and vibrancy test, I'm giving the Derwents a B, and that's primarily because the white was so good. And that puts them here. The next test for us today is, of course, a single pencil gradient test. 
This is a very simple test, but a very important one. Here we're taking each of our pencils and making a smooth gradient. What we want to see here is a gradual smooth transition down through all the weights as I release the pressure on the pencil. This test is a really interesting exercise in working from heavy to light. The easier the pencil is to control, the better our gradient will be. Will the Derwent pencils be consistent in this gradient? Let's go find out. Let's start off our gradient with our red pencil. I'm starting quite heavy here and slowly lifting off that pressure. The red isn't doing too badly, although there is a very similar amount of pigment coming down until it just suddenly gets lighter. Let's try the green. It's similar to the red here, but a little bit more obvious drop off quicker. I think it's happening around the 100 gram mark as it just drops straight off. The blue is quite smooth, although again, we haven't got as much of a light end here as with the other colors. The yellow starts off well, and then again, it drops straight into that mid and lighter end. The black has done what looks like the best out of all the pencils. It's relatively good until it hits that lighter end. Let's check out our white. It's starting off very well and continues to do an excellent job. It feels like it has a slightly better light end than the other colors, but again, it's struggling a bit. All right, so our Derwent gradients are done and the overall results are okay. As far as gradients go, these pencils are relatively easy to work with. I did find that with the four primary colors, there felt to be a step in the gradients from the 200 to the 100 gram mark. This was more obvious in the green and yellow, but I could feel it lurking in the red and blue as well. Sometimes with these thinner gradients, it hides steps a little better than had I done a larger, wider one, as there's more denser pigment in the smaller area. The black was slightly patchy, but overall fairly good. And the white was, for a wax pencil, excellent. Keeping these things in mind, let's grade the Derwent pencils in the gradient test. Using our scale to grade each pencil and then averaging across the six pencils together, I'm going to give them a B. And we're gonna pop this one in about here. With our blending test here, we want to see how these colors blend together. What we're going to be doing is bringing in our four primary colors and blending them together. What we're looking for here is a seamless uniting of our colors and whether and how they mix in the middle. With wax pencils, we can expect a mixing and a blending of pigment from our pencils on the page. How good that will be? Well, we're just gonna have to find out. We're starting off our blending test the same way as we did our gradient test. We're going to take our red pencil and go from a really heavy weight to a really light one. Interestingly, that red is very similar to the gradient test, but as it's now wider, you can really see the drop off in the mid to light range. Next, we bring up our green from the bottom and start blending. I can see here that while these colors are coming together to make a sort of brown like color in the middle, it's relatively poor and not super dense. The green appears to have had that same sudden drop off as the red, and I just don't think we're getting enough pigment on the paper to make a decent blend. Let's try our blue and yellow. The blue gradient has gone down slightly better than the red, but it's still a bit of a drop off. And the yellow gradient is the same. Interestingly, the blue and yellow look like they have done a better job as there is more green there, but again, it's not super dense and doesn't last long. I'm just going to go back down on that yellow and see if making this gradient denser helps the blend. It has a little bit as we have a little bit more green appearing, but it's not super great. Well, that was interesting. The wider test really showed the stepping in the colors being put down that's haunted these pencils through every test. There is a drop off for all of these pencils in that 100 to 200 gram mark. And when it does fall off that ledge, the amount of pigment being put down really makes it a bit of a struggle to blend. If we have a look at where the two colors meet, which is the most interesting area in this test, we can see new colors being formed. With a pencil that blends well, those colors should ideally gradient as they go from the densest part of the two color mixing to the lighter areas. The green from the blue and yellow has done better than the brown from the red and green, but both of them drop off really quickly and to be fair, aren't overly good mixes. There has to be a certain amount of leeway with these tests based upon the core mix. Oil layers, but wax blends. And if this were an oil pencil, we could say it was an okay result. More layers would make this better. But as it's wax, the end result wasn't great. So for the blending test, I'm going to give the Derwent a B minus for blending. And that puts them here on our big scale.
For this test, we're going to use our previously created blending test here and bring our white pencil in to draw over the top of the color. I'm only going to go over half of it so we can compare both sides. What we want to see here is how the white pencil changes and affects the already drawn colors. Will it burnish? Will it blend? Will it make any difference? Let's find out. I was pretty impressed by the white pencil in the gradient test. It gradiented very well and was surprisingly strong, particularly at the higher weights. So I'm curious to see what it does here. I'm going to push as hard as I possibly can to give the white pencil the best chance of being seen. Interestingly, there isn't a huge difference so far comparing the white on the red and green. I think perhaps they've blended together a little bit better with the red becoming more pastel, but we really can't see the white that well. It's a similar story on the side with the blue and yellow. Perhaps it's slightly helped with the green blend in the middle, but minimally. The white has done consistently well in our previous tests, but here unfortunately, it's a bit hard to see it doing much. I think it has helped blend the colors together a little bit better, but nowhere near what I assumed it would with such a vibrant white. As for burnishing of our colors, it does appear to have had an effect, but I suspect the blend we are drawing down to has struggled so much because the pigment in our blend is quite thin. I suspect this pencil may be good for burnishing, but possibly not with Derwent pencils. For a slightly underwhelming white test, I'm going to give the Derwent a B- for the white factor. And they're going to end up right here on our big scale. Why is colour accuracy important? Good question because we want to know what we're getting basically. There is nothing more frustrating than grabbing a pencil only to find the color you think it is, is different to the color they put down. Unless we know a pencil really well, the color on the barrel is what we assume them to be, but sometimes they're not. So let's see how accurate the Derwent colors are. For this test, I'm simply bringing in the swatch at the end of the pencil and putting it next to the gradient that we created earlier. We are just going to compare them by eye to see how accurate our colors are. First up, we have our red here. The color on the barrel here is so much darker than the pigment that it's put down. So too is that green barrel. It's at least two shades darker on the barrel than the pigment. The blue is a very similar story. It's much darker than the pigment that's been put down. The yellow is about the only one that's not too bad, to be honest, with the color on the barrel and the pigment being relatively similar. But that black barrel is still a fair bit darker than the pigment that it's laid down. Right, well, I would say the accuracy is pretty average with these pencils. Honestly, this tiny color swatch is also really problematic here as it's really hard to tell if they're different or not. But if we get really close, I don't think these pencils are accurate at all. The green and blue are pretty close, but the red pigment and the yellow pigment are much lighter than the represented color. Today, we're going to give the Derwent Artist pencils a C plus for color accuracy. And that puts them here. It's time for my favorite test, the break factor. We've done this test enough now to know we're not actually going to snap our precious pencils, or are we? What we're going to do with this test is to use our trusty scale to measure the pressure required to break the Derwent pencils lead. This test is fun, but it's also an important test because it tells us a few things. Firstly, it gives us an idea of how hard the lead is, and it also lets us know how consistent the cores are across the pencils. To make this test as consistent as possible across all the pencils we're going to review, I've set up a couple of controls. I'm going to sharpen each pencil to a point. I'm then going to dull them slightly by drawing three lines at pressure. Basically, this will make sure we don't have a super fine point that will break immediately. I'm then going to be using a 45 degree square to get a consistent angle of pressure. Makes sense? Let's go break some leads. Let's get this break first started with our red pencil. I'm going to set it up with my square and start putting on that pressure. And we're building and building and bam! There we go, 595 grams, actually a lot lower than I thought it would be. I've always assumed these pencils are really strong because they're a little bit scratchy. Let's try our green now. Let's set up our pencil and now slowly building up that pressure. Here we go. Slowly, slowly, and snap. Our green broke at 708 grams. There you go, it is a little bit stronger than our red. Let's check out that blue now. Will this one be stronger than the others? Let's find out. Here we go. Slowly but surely putting on that pressure. 
building it up and bang, there we go, we broke at 683 grams. Interestingly, our blue was in between our red and green. Let's see what the yellow has to offer. Let's set it up and get started. Making sure it's on that 45 degrees and let's go. Building up our pressure slowly but surely, up we go and snap. There we go, at the yellow broke at 670 grams, which is very close to the blue. Let's give that black a go. Here we go, building up the black's weight. Up we go and bang, 566 grams. Wow, that is actually a lot lighter than I expected. Last but not least, our white pencil. Here we go, will this be a super strong white? Slowly, I'm putting on the pressure. Here we go and whack. 995 grams. That was actually a really strong white. That was very interesting. I've had a feeling throughout this testing that the Derwents are quite hard leads. The catching and the poor performance at the lightweights all gave me this impression. But when we average them out, the Derwent pencils have a break point of 703 grams, which is fairly mid range. When we put that on the scale here, we can see they're slightly below the polychromos and the Prisma color but their consistency is fairly poor. They go from a low of 566 grams for the black to a high of 995 grams for the white, which isn't great. In doing these tests, I've noticed that the white is often harder than the other colors, which may or may not be because the company intends you to use it as a burnisher, but we don't know. If we ignore that pencil, they do score a little better with the lowest being the red at 595 grams and the green at 708 grams, but there's still more than 100 grams between them. Because of that inconsistency using our scale, I'm going to give the Derwent Artist Pencils a B- for their break test. And our Derwent Artist Pencils are gonna sit about here. For my final test, I want to know if these pencils spark joy or if they cause despair. This test is purely based upon the vibe and the feel I've gotten from the pencils as I've used them today. Let's start by looking at the design of these pencils. Honestly, I really haven't enjoyed the thicker pencil. They feel a bit bulky and old school. I don't like the size of the shaft and I don't like the length. Color-wise, the dark green and gold should be quite elegant, but coupled with the off-color silver and the tiny swatch at the end, they make the overall design of the pencil seem old and outdated. I would love a genuine silver ring at the end and a swatch twice as big, and I feel like these pencils would look so much better. The green also needs a little bit more oomph. The color is nice, but it's like an imitation of what it should be. 20% more gloss in that green would make these very striking. Feel-wise, I really dislike the fact that when the pencils come, it's raw wood at the end. This is rough and it just feels cheap. I also found that they were strangely and unpleasantly grippy when you first use the shaft. The paint feel wears off after a bit of use, but it's just another element that takes away from the pleasure you have when opening a new pencil kit. Performance wise, they're fine, I guess. They performed averagely across the board. Nothing has really stood out. They blended okay, but nothing special. And a white, which was performing well, didn't really ring any bells when it was blended. They seem to have a mid-range step in using these pencils, which drops off quite quickly in all the tests. And the overall saturation and vibrancy, at least at the weight we tested here today, doesn't feel like it's enough. What I would consider mid-range pressures in using these pencils don't really live up to the expectations we have in artist pencils. Color accuracy, much like the design, is just a bit meh. These pencils just really don't excite me in any way. They have a reputation for quality here in Australia and people will often buy them for art projects or gifts, or at least they did 10 years ago. I also have it on good authority. They are still listed for many high school art courses as required equipment. I really wonder about this and I think it's a case of brand awareness. We've always been a small market here in Australia and I think the Derwent's reputation has come from a time where there simply wasn't anything else available or perhaps a time where this was the best tech we had in pencil cores. At that time, they may have been the best, but now with the range that we have available, there are plenty of better pencils at the same price point, which are a much better choice. For want of a better word, they feel dated. Because of this, I'm going to say that the Derwent Artist Pencils do not in fact spark joy. I'm not going to say that they cause despair because I see the love people have for these pencils and I know they have a genuine place in many people's hearts. 
but for me, they are the closest I've seen to causing despair. In the Spark Joy Factor for the Derwent Artist Pencils, I'm giving them a C. And that puts them here. Okay, after saying all of that, I have to give an overall score for the Derwent Pencils. I'm going to aggregate all of our scores they received over all the tests to get the total score for these pencils, which is going to be a B minus. Before we finish up, let's pop these pencils in on our graph we've been building. And these guys are going to sit right here. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if there's any tests that I've missed or if you disagree with my final comments on the Derwent pencils. Did any of you get these as a gift when you were a kid and do you still use them? I'm curious if the gift status of these pencils here in Australia is just because that's what people know. I know that Derwent has many newer mixes of pencils in their range and I'm very much looking forward to checking them all out in time. We have something different coming out next time, hot press versus cold press paper. What the heck's the difference? If you'd like to see more, check out the links below. Otherwise, if you want to see more of my face, you can come join us on Twitch. Anyway, that is it for today, everyone. I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye.